Which mainline Halo game is the best Halo game ever? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand the details. How's it going, everybody? It's Kevin here once again, give you another video. Today, we're doing some, something a little different. We're doing the tier list maker when it comes to the mainline Halo games. I'm sure you guys have seen some post up on Twitter, into social media, the S through D or trash tier kind of uh, meme kind of thing, whatever you want to talk about it is going around. And so I thought you guys, I'd give you mine for the mainline Halo games. Now that I mean like as in the FPS shooter games, not the Halo Wars or uh, Spartan Assault games or anything like that, just the mainline Halo games, S through D, which ones are the best. This video, I'm going to go over you all my opinions and why I think these Halo games rack up the way they do. Okay guys, so here we are, we're on the uh, tier list maker. And so basically you can see on the bottom we have CE all the way up to Halo 5. And uh, you have S, A, B, C, and D. S being the god tier, the best. D being, well, pretty much the worst. And so I figured I'd give you guys my opinions on which Halo games I think are the best. I've been asked many times what are my opinions of the best Halo games out there. And so I, uh, this is your chance to watch it, so here we go. So what I think is probably D and probably D, and then go up to S. Uh, D, for me, sorry guys, I know some people in the chat here or in the video, the subscribers here, are fans. Me, not so much, but it had to be Halo 4. Uh, that goes in the D tier. And for me, the reason why it goes down to D is really just because of the multiplayer. The multiplayer has always been a huge part about Halo and for how much Halo changed for Halo 4 was just such a drastic change and they didn't really go all out with it. I feel like uh, they tried to implement a lot of things that Call of Duty tried doing, which was the most popular game at the time. Uh, understandably, gotta keep, gotta keep up with the market and what people like. Um, but the thing is though, is that uh, 343 didn't really go full on in with copying Call of Duty so, so they can maintain a little bit of what classic Halo is. So basically what kind of happened with the multiplayer is that COD kids didn't like Halo 4 because it played like Halo. And Halo kids didn't like the game because it played like Call of Duty. And so ultimately it didn't really please anybody. So it was, you know, it wasn't good. The one thing it does hold it up to be at least a decent game is the campaign. I feel like the campaign is a really well told story. Uh, I think gameplay wise it was a little here and a little iffy at points but it's still a solid campaign. If I'm gonna go back and play Halo 4 it's for the campaign. Uh, and also with sparring outs with the game it just didn't uh, really capture what they were trying to do is continuing campaign gameplay story elements which a story in sparring ops is fantastic but the gameplay of the sparring ops not very much. And so overall, the only thing I really like about it is mainly the campaign storytelling. And if that's the only aspect of a Halo game, it's going to be my D tier one. Uh, next up here, we're going to go up to C tier here. Honestly, I'd put ODST at C. Um, now I know a lot of people love ODST. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's a solid game. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I just, with ODST, I always find myself like starting the campaign getting like a third of the way through and just kind of losing interest. I've started and not ended this campaign so many times. I just don't get completely grabbed into the campaigns like I do with the other Halos. And since it was a, kind of a smaller sub Halo game, but still a main game, it's kind of weird position for it. Uh, it did bring Firefight, which was great. Uh, but the only problem was I didn't really get a chance to fully experience it because there was no matchmaking with uh, Firefight at the time. And there still isn't, and it didn't come until Reach when they brought in Firefight matchmaking. So I didn't really have a whole lot of chance to play with a lot of people online. The game is still just better than Halo 4, uh, just for the parts that are in the game, because Firefight is fantastic. The mode that they created was awesome, uh, but it just didn't have the matchmaking. But it's probably my favorite version of Firefight is an ODST. It's a ton of fun. Uh, campaign gameplay is good, especially I feel it's a lot more fun when you're playing with friends in this one, especially compared to other Halo games where you can play solo and have a good time. But I feel like ODST kind of needs a squad of friends to play with and have a good time. So to me, ODST goes into the C tier. Okay, guys, next game on the list we're going to put up here is Halo Reach. And I feel like Halo Reach deserves to go as a B tier game. The reason I put it above ODST is because I find the campaign is probably the most fully realized campaign ever created by Bungie 
And I feel like this game, that campaign was honestly a really fantastic campaign. The storytelling that was a little weak in my opinion, but the gameplay is fantastic. Um, I think the Forge, they really progress Forge forward in that game to really make it into a, a map creator rather than a map editor or just a tweak kind of thing. And I played around with that a ton. Um, and <clears throat> I would say that the multiplayer overall, it's good. It's not great, not bad, just kind of right in the middle right there for me. I feel the like campaign is great. Firefight was just... Went from, from ODST the firefight ODST firefight to reach firefight. It was just like let's turn this thing up to ten. And like exactly what Bungie did. And it was crazy the stuff they were able to pull off in Firefight. It's definitely the best one in my opinion. Uh, and also just like the visuals I think were great in this game as well. I like the beat up rustic version of these uh, Spartans. Just look it just looks awesome. So kind of overall guys, that's why I put reach into the B tier status. So now what we have left, we have CE, Halo 2, Halo 3, and Halo 5 left. And for me, honestly guys, I would probably, it's really tough for me to kind of choose out of this whole thing right here. I would probably put Halo 5 as a B tier. I think the multiplayer for Halo 5 is fantastic. It certainly has its flaws. Uh, I mainly play Team Arena just because there's no Spartan Charge or Ground Pound, but since I removed that, it helped me enjoy the game a lot more, and it's probably one of the Halo multiplayers I've played the most out of any other Halo. So like the multiplayer, super, super strong when it comes to Halo 5, and Forge in the game is fantastic. The recent BTP refresh has just made the game so much more fun, and it's the Forge creations that people have been able to make is uh, the best the series has ever seen, I really applaud 343 for the efforts they've done on the multiplayer side of the game. Now when it comes to the single player campaign side of the things, uh, I felt the gameplay for Halo 5 was actually pretty good, but uh, the storytelling was pretty much the worst in the game. That's really what holds this game back from being an A or even an S tier. I'm just going to say that, guys. I really still enjoy Halo 5's multiplayer. I still stream it quite often, as you guys know on this channel. Um, but I think overall, I think Halo 5 is a B tier. Right, so now we have left to CE 2 and 3. Let's go to Halo CE. I'm going to have to throw out this game as an A tier. Comparing it to the pre later Halo games, obviously it doesn't have as much content. It has its flaws for sure. It plays a little clunky. It, could it can tell it's dated. But the thing is, you also take into consideration the time this game was released. Back in 2001, where shooters were still trying to find their groove on the consoles. And Halo was the first game to perfect that. Halo CE was a game that changed a generation of gamers. So many people have played this game over and over and over again. Multiplayer side of things, you can play casually and have fun. You can play competitively and have a great time. Where there's a decent skill gap and if you're a good player that knows how to you know, check spawns and shoot properly, you can dominate in the game as well. And also the campaign is still one of the best campaigns in Halo's uh, franchise history. Uh, the openness to it is fantastic. I think the gameplay works out really well. It's like simple, straight to the point. It's fun. And I just really can't say anything else. Like the story, they, they try to give you a big, huge blockbuster story without trying to make it bigger than it is or what it should be kind of thing. And so I put CE at an A tier. What holds it back from being S tier for me from an S tier is that the gameplay hasn't really aged very well. And so you have to take that into consideration as well compared to all these other Halo games. But the campaign is definitely the point that still holds strong with CE. It's what keeps me coming back to this game. And so that's why I put it as A tier for Halo. Next game on the list here, Halo 2. We're going to put that as A tier. And the reason why I put it as A tier, a lot of people probably put this as their S tier. And that comes up to just personal opinion. I put it at A tier. One, it's because the campaign is probably the one of the best campaigns in the Halo's franchise. Personally, it's my favorite. I think it's a nice combination of big blockbuster game with a good story as well and leaves you wanting more but giving you a satisfactory ending. Uh, the multiplayer and the things, they really tuned things up a lot better from CE. Uh, but the thing was that, that this game was rushed so hard that there were so many glitches and exploits when it comes to Halo 2 that they even had to kind of patch that up a bit when it came to Halo 2 Anniversary when they're like, shipped just like it did 10 years ago. Not exactly because it's on the Halo 4 engine and you can't do all the different kind of exploits you could do. And a lot of the things that people liked about Halo 2, like the button combos and things like that, were kind of taken out with the next game. So 
with that tra transition over there, guys, we're going to have to go Halo 3, for me, is S tier. Uh, no game has ever had me so hyped and delivered on that hype as well as Halo 3. I still remember the day, the night I picked up Halo 3 and put it in my Xbox and played it. I was smiling ear to ear that my roommate even took a picture of me because he thought, what a freaking nerd. Why would you be so excited about this? And I'm like, well, dude, it's freaking Halo. And so that's pretty much that. Uh, I think the multiplayer is a great evolution of Halo 2. Kind of took all the parts of Halo 2 that didn't really exactly work and also um, expanded on the multiplayer as well to give a bigger sandbox. And also I think a, the battle rifle projectile is like probably personally, I think it's a lot better when it comes to hit scan. I've noticed that like map movement is a lot freer when it comes to projectile weaponry than it is with hit scan. Uh, so like I played like on Tombstone in Halo 2 plays a lot different than Hang 'em High in CE because of that projectile difference. And ultimately, I think it does play better on the large scale maps. Uh, they introduced Forge into the game. Uh, I've never seen any kind of map editor previously in a console game. Now they gave, and not only that, that uh, Bungie also helped update the game to give players what they wanted to help create maps. And it was the community uh, aspect of the game as well was just absolutely huge. Um, it just the features that people were able to utilize to help spread their content around which is fantastic the campaign storytelling was great a great continuation of Halo 2 uh, though I my only gripe with the game is that you have to backtrack a lot of the campaign missions like you play it all the way through and then you beat it and then you gotta play the next mission all the way back to the beginning of the next map just to kind of reusing content so they can reduce uh, dev time the whole thing and uh, some missions that make sense. Other times I'm like, man, I've already you know backtracked like two times already in this game. And uh, I know that Halo games later on really helped. I did a really much better job of avoiding that. And that's the one issue I really have with Halo 3 is that campaign you have to backtrack a few times. But other than that, the like, campaign is great. Multiplayer is probably the best it's ever been. And Forge was a great addition that revolutionized Halo's franchise. And so that's why I put Halo 3 as my S tier. Now I know this is going to cause a lot of controversy in the chat, guys. And I'm here to read all your guys' opinions on what you would like to see for your list. Put right in the comment section down below. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. Uh, I, th I still think Halo 3 is probably the best Halo that's ever been created. Um, but you know, all the other games still have their own aspects of which make them great as well. Just uh, some are better than others. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to tap that like button. Let me know if you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below where your thoughts are on this top tier list. Uh, I would like to read yours in the comment section down below as well. If you want to stay up to date with anything Halo related, as in Halo Infinite, Halo MCC, Halo 5, or anything in between like that, make sure to tap subscribe with the bell because we all know sub feeds can be kind of weird at times. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right now. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.